Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Today I want to talk to you about the third edition in the Tale series from Glenn Morangy. This is A Tale of the Forest and it follows the 2020 version of A Tale of Cake, 2021 A Tale of Winter, which I wasn't crazy about, and now here's 2022's release. So. Dr. Bill, who is the director of whiskey creation for Glen Morangy, he goes on walks most days. And I love this. You know, it's something I can definitely relate to. As you've seen, I've filmed many episodes in the forest, actually. But he kind of went out there. He wanted to take in the sounds, the smells. You know, what's it like after a rain? What's it like when the leaves are crunching? What's it like on a hot day? All these different expressions he wanted to try to make into a whiskey, which is a bit of an ambitious goal. Just thinking about that, right? So he decided to employ a technique that they haven't done at Glen Morangy since the very early early 1900s, where they actually use things other than just peat to smoke and dry out their barley. So they added things like juniper berries and heather blossom and uh, birch bark, as well as a little bit of peat in order to dry out that malt. Dr. Bill says, about 15 years ago, I began experimenting with elements of primary spirit production. This included kilning and the study of historically how barley used to be dried. Other combustibles, not just peat, were often used. Then, around 12 years ago, we produced one week's worth of spirit in the style. That is now A Tale of the Forest. Released in late 2022, this 92 proof 46% ABV 12 year old scotch was matured in ex bourbon barrels, both first and second fill. It's 100% malted barley, non chill filtered, natural color, and retails for about $100. Now clearly you gotta notice the, the box, it's pretty awesome, it definitely stood out on the shelf, it's actually what attracted my attention to it, I didn't even know this was coming out, and I saw it. But this was done by a, an artist named Palm Chan from Thailand, and she took inspiration from Dr. Bill's book as well as a walk through the forests of Thailand. She says, through my illustration I wanted to convey the mysterious depth of the forest as well as the botanicals and flavors you can find in the whiskey, heather, juniper, orange, mint. Let's get into the nosing and the tasting and find out if they nailed it. So the first thing that you're getting on the nose actually is sweetness with a little touch of smoke. I'm thinking that the heather is having an effect here that's making it smell a bit like honey. And then obviously the peat smoke that is there, it's never going to hide. And the fact that they are smoking it at all is going to add just a touch of smoke, but it's very, very subtle. Um, speaking of subtle, there's like a minuscule amount of citrus going on here. I would say more of a orange than say like a lemon or a tangerine or anything else like that. And then maybe a, a touch of leather. Overall, I would say it's, it's a bit earthy, but also a bit light. So pretty cool. All right, let's go ahead and have a taste. Cheers. So this is 46%, but I will say that it drinks just like a tad bit hot. Like if you told me this was 48, I would believe you. I wouldn't believe you at 50. But, you know, I mean, we're dealing with a couple percent, but you start to kind of get some of those nuances. Anyway, the taste here is very interesting. And something it does, right, we'll, we'll just kind of get a couple things. So there's this leather, there's a little bit of smoke, and um, some of that citrus, like the orange, comes through. But where I think this is really cool it has almost this young rye flavor going on where it tastes very herbaceous. And I don't see that a whole lot in many scotches. You could tell that they really fiddled with this thing. And I think it's cool to taste some of these flavors that I'm used to tasting in a rye in a scotch. Um, I just think that's very interesting. Interesting. Hmm. There is an earthy texture here, which if if I didn't know the story of this whiskey, I'm not going to picture these things. But because I do and I know what they were going for, I can kind of taste that earthiness that comes from dried crisp leaves on the ground. This is something that and I, I rarely get like this, like, oh, let me paint you a picture with my whiskey. This one actually does. I, I can see what he was going for here, and I actually think he kind of nailed it. Um, Really, really actually pretty cool. Hmm. One thing that's nice here is that most of the flavors are very well blended. So I'm not tasting this and saying like leather and herbaceous and citrus and whatever else. Like I'm getting those because I've tasted this a few times and I've taken some notes, but you don't get that without trying. It all blends together very well, but it also has a pretty heavy body where this is something I did kind of off camera. I had the 10 versus this because, of course, you want to see, you know, what's the standard versus what did they do, especially if you're paying $100 for it. 
And what this has over the 10, it's interesting. It's almost like the 10 is just like water compared to this. And we're only talking an extra 3%. So it's not coming from the 3%. It's likely coming from that peat smoke, giving it a little bit more body and a little bit more substance to the flavor. But that herbaceousness at the end can't be overstated or understated. I don't know. Either way, it can't be like it's it's really good. And it's definitely having a huge influence on this whiskey. So very cool. Like there's a lot of unique flavors in here that you do not taste often in scotch at all. So, hmm. Let me try one more sip. Hmm. It does have pretty good staying power. Usually by like the third or fourth sip of a whiskey, you're losing a lot of subtleties. You're losing a lot of flavor notes that you would get. This one's keeping it, especially because I think it's because a lot of what you're getting is in the finish. You're getting, getting it like almost down here and it's tasty. This is something I don't know that I would have like two or three glasses of this, but this is something that will I would see this as like my second second drink of the night. Maybe uh, maybe something like sherried first and then followed it by this. That would just be a whole different world of, of flavors going on. But anyway, so this one is $100. So that's something I always kind of keep in mind, but I do think I'm at that point where I start to need to just admit that scotch costs more money than it used to. And the idea of a scotch that's a limited release that is good and, you know, like it's not just the next one, you know, it's not the, the always offered kind of thing. Like this is good. And I think a hundred dollars for this, if you try this, you're going to like it. And so I think it's worth it. And it, for that, it's going to get my rating of buy it. Um, I was debating try it, but I just think that you would actually really like this. If you're watching a channel like mine, chances are that you're a little tired of some of the like generic stuff that you get off the shelf. Like even just the Glenn Morangy regular, the 10 year old, if that's the kind of thing that you're still on and you're still like loving that, don't get this whiskey. It won't, I mean, it'll be amazing, but it won't be for you. This is for somebody who's like, what's the next thing? What else can I try? What's a new flavor that I haven't had before? That's what this is. So this definitely gets my rating of buy it and I think you'll love it. So uh, a couple of quick things. I have a brand new shirt on my Teespring bar. It should be right below the video. Uh, if not, you can visit the store. There's a link down in the description. I really like this new design. I came up with it a few days ago and I like it because it's a little bit more subtle. It's not just like, hey, I'm an alcoholic, you know, it's it's a little bit more subtle and you can wear it. So I put it on a hoodie actually, just cause it's getting cold and I think it looks good on a hoodie. Um, other than that, I'm going to be doing a number of videos next week on different gifts that you can get for people for like the holidays and whatnot. A little different than I've done in the previous years where it's like a top 10 gifts to get. I'm going to do a smaller video multiple times next week to highlight several different products that are things that you're probably not going to see all over the place. But I hope to see you next week and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Cheers.